Mason. I'm a cloud solution architect from Microsoft Hong Kong. My role is helping customers to architect and design the cloud solutions with various our Azure cloud technologies, including some of the application modernizations, data platform, and data science platform as well. Today, I will introduce uh, the topics about the exploring containers and the orchestration in Azure. We will try to introduce uh, our various container hosting offerings in Azure. So let's talk about today's agendas. Today's agendas, uh, first I, I try to explain what is the and why we use the containers and try to tell you the difference between the container and the virtual machine. Traditionally, we are widely adopted. Uh, firstly, I will try to introduce our very convenient, very easy uh, surface to host the containers in Azure platforms, uh, Azure Container Instance, we call it ACI. Secondly, we need a place to save your containers. We call it registry. So Azure has the out-of-the-box solutions called Azure Container Registry. Uh, we call it ACI as well to put to have a, to give you a space to save your containers. Um, the fourth, the fifth topic, we talk about the app service as well. Uh, this is also an offering to try to give you a option to try to host a containers. So lastly. I will introduce the Azure Kubernetes service. This is the managed Kubernetes service in Azure to help you to deploy uh, very enterprise scale, uh, very elastic uh, Kubernetes service is managed in Azure platform as well. Let's get started. So why do we need why so common in boy containers? So what is container from the definitions from repeaters? Uh, the container is the standard unit of software, the package up all the code, all the dependency, and you can run very easily and quickly uh, and very rapidly in the one's computer platforms. And obviously, this is highly portable, just like the traditional containers. Imagine this is a container ship, okay? You can host the containers, and then the container can be moved to another ship very easily without any constraint. So because all the constraint, all the dependency is already packaged in the container already. So everything you need to run to call all the one time to choose is already packaged in the containers already. Multiple containers are running in single OS kernels. So compared with the traditional virtual machines, no matter using Hyper-V or VMware, uh, that's Finally, this is super lightweight because we, we get rid of the virtual machines, uh, the single isolated OS kernel because we are shared the kernels. So they are share each other, each of the containers. So that's why the container can be built so lightweight. So why containers? Why do we use it? Okay, why this is so common? Uh, first thing, we're on my machine, obviously. You can run the containers in your developer machines, one or maybe your user machines. Okay, on any machine you can run as long as you can install the Docker engines. You can run the container and containerize the applications in your machines. Uh, every environment looks the same because it's already packaged and containers. Each of the hosts, no matter Azure, maybe your you have installed the Docker engines in your local computers, just like a dock. Uh, you can put your container to run. Uh, in your environment, in your dock, okay, with the exactly same experience. So we can keep all the things, all the slope, all the styles, so looking without any changes. Increase the velocity, uh, the install the deployment because we get rid of the OS kernel share, OS kernel, okay. We can prepare all the dependency, all the libraries in the package in the containers. In terms of the velocity for the deployment, obviously it's super fast and super lightweight. And the last point, one anywhere because it all the dependency already packaged as the containers. You haven't any dependency on the OS platforms of the hosting, so you can put your you can make your container very e easily to run in anywhere. Maybe you have a shared container running ACI, ACI uh, application surface or AKF. This is also possible. It's very easy to swap between. Container can be run anywhere. Run on Linux, run on Windows, run on clouds, run on drums, Raspberry Pi. Nowadays, very common to host the IoT. 
device is running on everywhere. So this is the illustration to try to illustrate to compare the container and traditionally uh, virtual machines. Uh, the left hand side, I've tried to illustrate the Docker containers. As you can see, the container runtime, the host operation system and infrastructures is completely shared on completely shares. One, just two things is uh, isolated. The application, obviously, your great applications, the binaries, the libraries is completely separated. They are shared the compute container runtimes, got it Docker engine there. They are shared the OS kernel, so that's why it's fast for scalabilities, uh, easy to port to anywhere, no matter running on Linux, Windows, as long as you have Docker engine installed there, okay, you can put your container one in there. So compare with virtual machine on the right hand side, because it is separated OS. That means you need to prepare the OS for the images for, for your applications. You need to install the subsystem, uh, like the binaries, library you need to install against, and then deploy your application is there. Obviously, with the OS, you need to have a large footprint of pins in terms of size. Maybe you can say to raise the raise the size as well. So obviously, because this is individually, this is one OS running individually. The OS startup time is obviously is much more slower compared with the container. Just few seconds, you can bring the container application can be on. So when we say, hey, I want the Docker's, we need to have a Docker files. So let me show you a Docker example files in here. So this is a very classic and very simple example of the Docker files when you try to containerize your applications. Uh, you need to make a files called a Docker files, except no extensions, just make it as slim as Docker files in your root directory of your applications. And then just fill nine of code, very simple application for this here. Uh, the first line, we will try to import a base images. So we need to have the images of your containers uh, to run your applications. Container is just like a onions. You need to have a core, the base images, and then further package your libraries, your necessary libraries, and package your necessary application into as a containers. So just like onions. As a core, we need to have for these cases and try to use a Microsoft.NET core, which is running on Linux with the SDK 3.3, 3.0s. Uh, as a base image, it's well prepared. You can use it. And obviously, you can prepare by yourself. You can build your base images with your VAO, with your real customizations. You can prepare as a, as a base image. And then for the further deployment use, you can just import it. So second type, second things, we need to declare the environment variables. In my cases, I will define my one uh, environment variables called ASP.NET Core is the development. So the first nine is uh, working directories of your applica applications. Uh, we, uh, in this example, I try to define my working directory as a app called stack app. It's my working directory for my applications. So the next step is try to copy the data. Uh, you may just copy your root directory everything to the apps and then make it run. So this example is make it very simple. Just copy dot dot. I mean, copy all the codes from your root directories and the two applications. So the fifth now, you're talking about the one dot net restore. So this is very important. This is instruction to try to tell the dockers when you copy the code in there, okay? The instruction to tell the Docker engines what is the interfacing point to run your application. This is the command line, obviously, depends on the coding. In this example, I'm using a .NET core, maybe using Node.js, just want to know, okay, maybe using drawer, using the drawers, and then you can using different runtime in one instructions in there to run your applications. When the Docker is trying to starting up, you're based on this one command to run your run your containerized applications. Lastly, this is very important. This is the entry point of the .NET. You need to define the entry point to make it accessible from the outside world. This is the last point to make your application able to expose, to interact with your operation system, expose to the intranet or even internet. This is a very classic example to make, to tell the Docker files. This is the entry point. This entry configuration info parameter you need to know. 
and then lack their outside role able to access to your application as to able to access to your containerized applications. So to talk about the illustration just like this, once you we have created the Docker files, uh, you can run a very simple Docker command to try to build your applications. So the basic command is docker build item t tag. That's the tag you can uh, have tagging to, to your container to try to easier to identify your applications. Uh, let's say docker build hyphen t the tag for my example is Terran Traders, it's a containerized names, and then give a space and a doc. Doc means uh, will base on the current directory and then help you to base on this docker file to build your applications, build your containerized applications. So to build the Docker directories. So this is a very quick introduction to try to give you some more understanding about the containers applications. Uh, we have a nice and very great training materials from the Azure Microsoft Learn. Okay, in here you have a few class of lesson to try to understand more how do you build a containerized applications. Just go for it, and then you can get more some more detailed idea to make your first containerized applications for testing, for production, that's great ideas. So, hope this helpful to give you a basic understanding on uh, and ideas about the, what is the container is. So, containers we try to build in my local applications. We try to build it and tag it as Terran traders uh, in my local personal machine, personal machine, laptops, more local servers, right? So we, it's a time to try to publish it to serve for the user, serve for some purpose. Uh, the first touching point in Azure's hosting solutions, I uh, will try to induce you the Azure Container Instance. It's a very simple hosting solutions to try to host your simple containerized applications. So what is the Azure Container Instance? Once a container to be single night to command because it's crazily, it's very simple to run. Uh, ACI is per second billing. ACI is no virtual machine management, obviously. You need not to prepare your virtual machines. Uh, even using my demonstration laptop, I need to install Docker engines. You're not necessary to prepare that because there are no infrastructure dependency in there. You know, no necessary to install a virtual machine uh, because it's already been built. Uh, so it's very easy to build, just one single command line to run the ACI. So how do we want it? OK, the first step, you need to create a resources group. Uh, in here, in my example, uh, AC command I, Azure CLI, AZ group create. This command I is talking about to create a resources group. Resources group, um, this, this session is not trying to give you a Azure orientations or fundamentals. I can describe this uh, resource group is a logical unit to try to easily group your set of applications, set of resources. So give a meaningful name to try to group your resources. In my example, uh, name my resources group 0102, it depends. And then obviously you need to define the locations of a resources group. In my example, it's US. So the next step, uh, we try to start to create a container instance. That's very simple command line you can create it. So AZ container create, okay? That's the command line to create Azure container instance. Have a name, give the name to your container instance. And then the images. You may go to the Docker Hub, okay? You may push the public Docker Hub. It can be mount the container from the Docker Hub directly and then serve for the people. And then define the resources group you just created to make sure the resources is well organized. And then you can give a IP address in here to try to make it serve for internet, right? Serve for the people like public. Maybe you have a very simple uh, photo album website you build on the containers. Okay, try to package and container serve for it. This is a very quick way, just one single command line. You can try to create a Azure container instance and serve your containers application, containerized applications. So in our Azure Learn, uh, we have a specifically 
uh, topic to try to let you understand more about the uh, one the Docker containers uh, with the Azure Container Instance have a lab, have a try, and then you can pick the Azure Container Instance and the Container Instance deployment very easily. So next up, Container Registry. Registry is, is very important, right? Uh, the registry is the place to try to storing the containers. So every every single installation of the Docker engines with your machine, okay, is able only to serve your local purpose, right? So we need to have a place to try to save your container images and then do the further deployment. So that's why the registry come in place, just like a place to save all the containers and then in case the container instance uh, to app surface, I also would like to show in this next slide, also able to deploy containers. The AKS obviously need to have a phrase to try to store the containers, images. You can save in there. Your file history. Um, we have public registry, okay, from day one, very simple. It's free. Uh, Docker Hub, okay, but it is public. It also allows you to have a free PyFig as well, okay, obviously from the enterprise level. That's not lock enough. In this cases, you need to have a perfect registry. So, perfect registry uh, for you to allow the more efficient, more secure storage because it is owned by you completely. Only you can access by key, by certificate to access. So, we have the first class cloud native container registry. We call it Azure Container Registries. Uh, it's a managed Docker perfect registry as a first class Azure resources. So we support uh, all the images from the containers. Use your existing language. Use the existing Docker push, Docker pull command line to deal with the Azure Container Registry. No need to learn any new thing news. Uh, and Azure Container Registry also enabled the geo applications. In some cases, let's say if you located in Hong Kong, obviously you will select the Container Registry in East Asia regions. That's mean the Hong Kong, and then it can be enabled the geo replication capability to try to automatically replicate your containers okay, to another our peer regions, not just like Southeast Asia or other regions. Uh, in Southeast Asia, we, uh, it is located in Singapore to give you a geo redundance. Uh, very simple to create, uh, just go, go to the portal and then click on the Azure, Res Azure Container Registry define the name and then you can create it. Or if you don't like the portal, don't like the UI, let's try command line. Very simple line of command, you can create it. AZ, AZL create, that's the command line. We need to create the Azure Container Registry or do the administrations. Uh, define the resources group, okay, you have created before, right? So define the registry Tree name and then define the SKU. Let's try the basic. So first up, build command, okay? First step, just like a normal container registry, just like a Docker Hub. The first thing first, we need to lock in to the Dockers. So use the command AZ, ACL, lock in with your name. For my cases in here, my ACL. And then you can try to pull the container images. You can try to push the container images to a registry and again, you can also remove the images from a registry. Very simple command line, LMI. Remove images. You can remove the images from your Azure Container Registry. That is exact, exactly the same experience from the public Docker Hub. No difference. So, Container Registry is the private within your Azure environments. It can be served with multiple services if they have the container hosting capability. As I told you, uh, AKS, ACI, we have demonstration before, like the app service I will show, show you later on. Okay, maybe you have a Red Hat OpenShift, Pivotal Cloud Foundries, maybe you have a Docker Enterprise deployment, maybe a Mistral Spear. You also need to have a public registry to store your containers. So container registry is a uh, cloud native very simple to host your entire enterprise grade container images in a single frame. So try to learn more from our Microsoft learning here. 
uh, your great documentations. Um, try to listen it, try to test it if the lab, okay? And then you can get memorized on the how to use the Azure Container Registries. So web apps for the containers, it's a very simple applications, uh, very simple family inside the app services. We call it web app for containers. You can run and deploy the containerized applications in app services. Uh, take advantage the auto scaling and load balancing of the app services. And definitely you can streamline the entire CI, CED, continuous integration and deployment. Uh, with the Docker, maybe you can create your own container registry or GitHub to do the streamline end to end therefore processes. Let's go for some demos. Back to the portal again. This time I try to illustrate to use the portal. Okay. In the resources group, you can see from here. Okay. Let me try to create a app services. Web apps already in here. It's very popular. So in here, okay. Uh, first thing first, try to select your resources group you'd like to try to create it and then type the lamb testing one, two, three. Uh, maybe give it the already use it. Isn't a fun 16 two. Okay, you can run natively one in the platform or select the containers in here. So you can select the code, okay. If you would like to run your code directly from the app services, you can see it supports in multiple runtime like Draver, Tomcat, Draver uh, SE in here, uh, .NET applications, uh, Node.js, Python, Ruby. You can run the first time one time stack. Or in this example, I try to run the Linux containers in here. Or if you have the Windows container, you can also run in Azure. App services as well in this web example. Web example. This time I try to use the Linux one, and I select the regions. Uh, this time I try to select the Southeast Asia, and then you can select a app service plan. In here, I already create one already before. Okay, or if you can't see in here, you can just create one more. Maybe just test, and then you can change the size. Depends on your needs, depends on your requirements. Maybe you won't like to make your app service completely isolated within your virtual network and pharma. You can select the isolated. We have production grade, core premiums, uh, app services plan. You can select it. Oh, in here, if you just would like a very simple and testing, I can select a free one. But remember, obviously, uh, 60 minutes date compute and free, and one gigabit man gigabyte memory. Sorry, in here, you can apply. Depends on requirements. Select the white scale, and then you can advance, advance, maybe premiums or isolated. You can do the auto scaling as well, and then you can scale up, scale out easily. Uh, select your options. Uh, this time, try to use the single containers. Uh, don't use the quick start. Quick start will use the build an image uh, with the nginx. And then you can select the container registry, your Azure container registry. If you push your application, push your containerized application container registry, you can select in it and then select your registry, select images, select the tag you have created for the container images. You can select it or you can use the Docker Hub, okay? And then pin your images from here with the tag, with the white tag, and then you can select and run it. This is it. This very simple stuff to try to create a App services. Okay, I already create a uh, app services already with the app service plan. Okay, this is a wrap app for the containers, and then you can see if the situation is very similar as Azure Container Instance, you can try to see how many 500 errors in here, data in, data out, the request. Try to type the container in the menus. So you can try to see if you would like to change your container images, you can change in here. You can see the log when we try to start up your containers. This is another simple way to run your containers easily in Azure. 
as a result, you can click on the URL is already prepared for you in here and then try to access into it and then run your containerized applications. This is the second option to run your containerized application in Azure. So have a look on the learning documents. We also built a uh, instruction guide on the Microsoft Learn to guide through you very simple stuff and then the interactive uh, demo lab as well. We try to get you familiarized on the app surfaces with the containers. Uh, the third option is most common okay, about the Azure Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes service to serve for the production applications. AKS. So it's a fully managed Kubernetes service uh, by Microsoft. You need not to install the Kubernetes engine by yourself because it's fully managed. It. Elastic to provisioning, just single line for command line, you can create AKS clusters. It's a fast end to end development to integrate with DevOps process. It can be do the identity access management with the AD. You can define who is the person able to deploy the application in the Kubernetes service. Uh, the orchestration is across 29 regions of almost there's so many regions of global to AKS uh, in Azure Stack as well, or even IoT. So the AKS elements of the orchestrations, uh, you can do the scaling, affinity or anti affinities, the health monitoring, the failovers, uh, the AKS already did for you already, the number king service discoveries, the co coordinated app service upgrade, the scaling, the networking, you can conflict by your own. It's fully customized by your own. So you can focus on your containers, focus on the deployments, not just the infrastructures, because you are not need to spend time to create a bunch of the virtual machine or physical server, and then manage and create a Kubernetes engines on the top. Uh, this is open. Well, how you want to open source API, just the same things because this is uh, managed at Kubernetes service, no so much different in there. You can scale and run the applications with the confidence in the AKS. So let's kick start how to create your AKS. First up, I also use the AC command line, Azure CLI. AC CLI. We try to see how to create the Azure Container Instance. We try to see how to create the Azure Container Registry. We try to see how to create an app surface from Portal. And obviously, you can wonder uh, to create your app surface from the Azure CLI command line as well. And obviously, the Azure Kubernetes service we can create from the Azure CLI. In here, we call it AZ, create, uh, define your resources group just like previous demonstrations, give the name, meaningful lamps to your AKS. And then generate your SSH key. Okay, if you don't have it, uh, just try to generate it, generate for it, and then run for it. Very simple. And then you can create your clusters. Wait for a while, and then you need to get the credential of your AKS cluster you just created. Just very simple command line to get your credential. Uh, AZ AKS install CLI, and then you can download the credential to your machines. And then you can use the very common and famous administration and operation tool of Kubernetes, keep control, KUBECTL, and then try to orchestrate and administrate your Kubernetes cluster. This is a very simple command. I try to get the, how many nodes in your clusters. So, a few more command lines, example uh, AKS list the tables to try to list uh, how many AKS clusters in your subscriptions in a table format. You can do the upgrade of your Kubernetes version with this command line as well. Like I uh, tried to upgrade the Kubernetes version to 1.14. You know, uh, Kubernetes have various versions to try to create some uh, fix. Okay, I have a minor update for the, for the security patches for the major Versions we have, they have some more new features in here. You can try to upgrade and draw the new features. You can use the single night 
command to try to upgrade the current disk versions. You can try to scale to get the node. For example, get the node. We just have three nodes in here. If you think this is not enough, uh, you can use the very simple command line to run the AC AKS scale. Type the resources group, your custom names, and then the agent count from three, and then obviously this time we're going to ten. And in the newer clusters, we are supporting auto scaling features as well. So, and you can also create a Kubernetes cluster via the portal if you don't like the command line like me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Obviously, the command line is preferable because it's so simple. Command line, you, you can you can do the repeatable. I prefer I prefer I suggest you using command line to create the AKS clusters. If you don't like the command line, okay, you can go to the portal and then click on Azure Kubernetes surface, give the name, give it a resource group, and then you can create an AKS cluster as well. So demo. In here, the demos. Um, today, I give you some demo. Uh, some more than the basic one. Okay, so I already create a AKS cluster already. Let me try to try to fire crypt control command I just try to have a look of our article to try to to for see how to make, how to install crypt control command I in the Windows and then crypt control get node to try to get how many nodes uh, for my Kubernetes clusters. In my example, or just one node in here, just one node in here. I try to save money, and then try to get the port. To try to see how many port that means in simple way. Uh, you can try to understand this is a container, okay? In your AKS cluster, I have two container. It's one linked in my AKS cluster nowadays. You can get the surface, okay? To try to expose your surfaces, okay? To see. How many surfaces has been exposed in your AKS cluster? In my example, I have two in here uh, with the perfect IP address. Okay. So back to the code. Let's see the code in here. Let me try to do something in here. Uh, in this example, I'm trying to use Java as an example. Obviously, you can use any other language, maybe Python, maybe Ruby, maybe Node.js. You do, you like it, you prefer it. Okay. So uh, just modify the application.java files. Uh, as an illustration, I try to modify the version from uh, 1.5 to 1.6. Uh, this is the Visual Studio code. As you can see, this free, completely free, very convenient. Lots of the packages you can. Uh, expedite your development process, and then it's also integrate with the DevOps tools as well. You can just uh, log into the code repository and then push it, and then give some meaningful command for my changes on my code. Let's say update the code from 1.5 to 6. 1.6, okay. Commit the command. Push the repository. Perfect. Okay. Actually, I already built a DevOps pipeline with the DevOps tools. Uh, this time, I'll try to demonstrate and using the Azure DevOps at Illustrator purpose. Obviously, you can use other famous uh, DevOps tools like uh, Bibcat. Maybe maybe you love GitHub. You can use GitHub to the for the code repository. Maybe you can use the Jenkins for the integration or defer. Deployment CICD as well. So this time I try to illustrate and use the Azure DevOps services. Our first party cloud native DevOps tools uh, for the end to end DevOps pipeline. Uh, let's wait for a while. I'll show you later on. But I would like to show you something in here. So I try to illustrate the Docker files. This is Docker files for my containerized application as well. And I using, as I said, at the very beginning of this session, so I try to illustrate, try to tell you the container is a lot just like onions. This time I'm trying to use the open JDK 8. JDK is uh, Alpine version Linux as a base to package my onions, right? My big onions as a core. And then define the volume as 10. And then copy my build applications, the draw files, 
uh, to the applications and then define the endpoint to try to serve for the applications. That's right here. So before I try to build end to end part nine, I also need a deployment definitions YML in here to try to deploy the services, de deploy the ports, prepare for it. Okay. And then you can see from here. As I show you from the command line in here, obviously I'm not using manual creator manually. I'm using the YML to try to create a port initially, create a service initially. This is the definitions. Uh, in this definition files, these have two parts. Okay. The first part, I try to define the services in here. Okay. Create the services with the private IP address, as I show you, and then Define the services port is 18 to serve for the applications. And then I define the deployment in here. The deployment is try to deploy the images from my Azure Container Registry. And then define the resources. And my container registry is locked down that it's not public. I also define the pool secrets. We defined it in my Azure Kubernetes cluster. So let's see the end-to-end -end DevOps pipeline work status. So back to the screen in here. Let me try to magnify it a little bit. Oh, some other suspicious stuff. Okay, this is Azure DevOps. Okay, so as you can see, okay, I already published and push my code to my code repository in here in the Azure DevOps. As you can see, my changes around three minutes ago from uh, 1.5 to 1.6. Okay, and then I already predefined a pipeline to try to do the continuous integrations in here. And then help me if someone try to push the code and then do the integration to build the mavens. So you can see here is I will want the maven build. And then this is predefined the workflow pipe nine uh, previously. Just once someone try to change some code thing, and then it will automatically trigger the build process with the maven. I have defined it and then the step is try to build after the Maven build the draw files. I will push to the sorry for that. Okay, back to the screen. Uh, try to build the containers. Try to push the containers to the registries. This is the first step. Let's go to the pipeline. After the building process, I can do the release. So this is release number 10. Okay. We need to I do some more advance for my release. In here, I will try to deploy my containerized application after testing. I will deploy to the production as well. Uh, it will first need to deploy the developments. Once I building process is completed, it will deploy to the developments and then give some testing to do some thread tests to try to use number of users to test the application. Is it still die or not? If not, and then we'll go through the production deployments. Let's try to click on this. So in here, this is successful to deploy to the developments. And then you can see uh, the deploy, the testing is still in progress. After testing has been done, and then I will receive an email and then do the production rollout. Uh, imagine I'm the testers. I accept the testing as well. Okay, everything going perfectly. I can roll out to the productions. Let's have a zoom into this release pipeline to give you more ideas. So three step pipeline after the build process has been done, the integration in previous lab, and then it can be automatically triggered the deployments in here. Or if you don't like it, obviously 
you can define some predefined approval. In here, in this example, I'm not trying to make an approval. I just make an approval for the production rollout. So I just make a one job. First simple, set the images, quick control set, set the images to the latest build numbers in here. Get the build numbers, that's the variable we can grab it and then deploy to the development clusters. So in here, back to the 10, okay. Sorry. Go to edit again. After the deployment, and then it will be automatically tracked the tag, go through the testing. In here, I will try to simulate have a five user workload, try the burning test for 30 seconds to see this URL is a die or not. If not, okay, it will be going for the production to roll out. And then in the rollout for the productions, I will deploy to the different namespace. Back to here. As you can see, I just uh, try to manipulate uh, the current namespace. Okay, let me give you some advanced command line. Keep control, CTL, I don't know. Good config, uh, current contacts. Obviously, you need to define the current contact first. Okay, see what the contacts. So uh, my current contacts, my namespace is using development, keep control, get namespace to see how many namespace in here. So I have DAF, I have productions. As you can see, my DevOps pipeline, I will do the testing in the development first. And then after the deployment has been done, uh, it will further deploy the productions. I believe is the, the application is already perfectly one in here already. Okay, uh, it's 1.5. I believe the 1.6. You can see the testing to the deployment is done, and just one step approval. As long as testing has been completed, I should able to receive an email message and then go to the Azure DevOps system to give an approval for the productions. And then the same application will roll out the production namespace. So let's try to change to the namespace to have a look. Uh, config. Uh, I try to use another contacts. Use uh, contacts. Uh, the contacts is productions, right? So change to productions contacts. And then let's see the current contacts to make sure we are running on it. Current context productions. Let's fire the command. Get port. Offers a little bit different uh, for the port. Get the surfaces around. Perfect. Obviously, you can get a different IP address. This is 37. Let's try. Yeah, it's still 1.4. It's a lagging behind the version, obviously. It's different, okay, because I have an approved because it's still play around within the development land space. Or if you want to change the DAF, obviously you can change it back. Get services, ears, okay. That's the testing has been done or not. Wow, oh, it's done. Succeeded, killed it. So I will receive something email like this to see the dev process has been done. And then I can do and see the result. Perfect to see the applications from 1.5 to 1.6. Perfect. So uh, the Azure Kubernetes demo helped you give you more advanced understanding of Azure Kubernetes surface look like. 
And we have the Microsoft Learn as well to give you a interactive demo. Try for it and learn for the actual community ser service to try to familiarize on the command line and then try to, <coughs> sorry, try to create the first AKS clusters. And you can get the certifications of the Azure fundamentals as well. So the dot alert, the containers, um, Azure for containers is a, a, is a single documentation pages, uh, including all the container offerings, uh, what I'm describing in this section, ACI, container registry, app services, web containers, right? And lastly, the so interesting Azure Kubernetes service managed the Kubernetes clusters. So all the resources, all the code, source code demonstrations has been published in here. You can try to download and save it. That's all. Microsoft Azure invent for purpose. If purpose. Okay. Hope you guys enjoy the sections today. It's okay. Hope you guys get more understanding about our various container hosting offerings in Azure. Have a try. Have a look. Uh, going to Microsoft Learning page. Let me know. PM me if you have any questions. Enjoy.